So the first thing that we'll want to do is of course, we want to get ourselves the selection around the hair. And the tool that I recommend for this is going to be the third tool down. And if you right click in here, there'll be something called the polygonal lasso tool. This is basically like the pen tool, but there's no dots. And all you do is just create straight lines. So you want to start on the hair, but you want to leave a gap in between the hair. So you want to go all the way around, leaving a gap in between, and you want to include all the hairs in this picture right here. So once you get all the way back to the very first one, you can either connect it up by clicking here, or you can hold control or command and then left click and this will connect it all up. Right, so now that we've got ourselves a nice selection, we we'll want to make sure that we're still selecting this tool. And once you see the button, go ahead and click on the select and mask. So what we want to do is select in the refine edge brush tool. You want to start on the hair and you want to pretty much left click and select the background. You want to also stay on the edges and get yourself the background. Now at the moment, nothing much will happen. So you won't really see any results until you actually let go. So just stay on the edges of the hair. If you get any hairs, for example, this bit right here, you can go a little bit more further into it. And then once you're happy with it, you can then let go of it and you will see that this has now removed the background. There's some areas that will remain behind. So you just want to keep on refining those areas until it's better. So as you can see, we now have a little bit of the background behind. And to fix this, we're going to use the brush tool, hold alt and then left click and drag it out to remove the part of the background. And you just want to continue on doing the same steps as before using the refine edge brush tool. Now, if you wanted to, you can also press K on your keyboard and this will swap on over to the black and white preview. And this gives you a really good idea of the areas which you've missed or if there's any areas that you need to remove. So for example, we need to get rid of this bit right here. We don't really need that one. Same goes for this bit right here with the eye. We need to remove this. If you wanted to swap back to the normal preview, just press V and this will give you the regular preview of the color. We can also do the parting line as well. So this is going to be very handy if you want it to look realistic. And there we go. What you can do now is you can scroll all the way to the bottom and where it says output to, you wanna set this one to a new layer and then go ahead and press okay. So as you can see, we now have the hair and the person separated. And this is going to give us a massive advantage in manipulating the hair color. So what we need to do now, of course, is to hold control or command and then left click on the new layer that we've just created to get ourselves a selection. And once you've got yourself a selection, you wanna go over to the adjustments. In here, let's say we were going to apply a hue and saturation. Once you apply the hue and saturation and you try to shift the colors over, it won't really do much you will only see it on the edges. And this is exactly what I mean by a stubborn black color or any dark colors in general. They don't really want to shift over or change into any other color. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of this layer and we need to once again, hold control or command, left click on this layer right here, go back into the adjustments and we'll want to get ourselves a curves adjustment. The reason for this is because we can go into here go over to the red channel and we can force the red channel to give us some sort of color. So as you can see, as we lift the red color, we are now getting this red color right here. We want to also hop on over to the green channel and with the green, you want to also move this one really high up to something like this. And as you can see, now we have some sort of color. And this is going to make it easier for us because once we have a color, we can easily change it to anything else that we want. So once you've done that, you can minimize this. And if you wanted to, you can hold Alt and then left click in between right here and this will clip it onto the hair layer. 
So now what we want to do is of course we want to do the actual color change. And to do this, you hold control or command once again, get yourself the selection, go back into the adjustments and you want to get yourself the hue and saturation. In here, you want to first of all, click the one that will say colorize. And as you can see, we now have a slider which actually affects the hair color. So if we wanted to, we can set this to a nice 275 for a nice purple color. The second option is going to allow you to either desaturate it to something like this, or you can saturate the colors a lot more. So as you can see, we can go for a really bright color. But personally, if you're going to create something realistic, I would say about 40 and anything below that. And of course, the very last one is going to be the lightness of it. So with the lightness, you can control how dark you want it to be or how bright you want it to be. So a healthy balance for this one would be something like minus 10 because it still has color, but it gives you that realism. And once you've done that, you can then close this down or minimize it. You will have quite a few touch-ups which you can do. And the first one is of course, to get rid of any greens that are being left behind. So for example, as you can see, we still have a little bit of green lingering around right here at the top. And to fix this, all we have to do is go over to the brush tool, set it on a white color, put it to about, let's say a hundred, or let's put it to about 50 for the size. And you want to make sure that you're selecting your hue and saturation mask layer. Once you've got this one selected, a cool little trick for the brush tool is in the opacity right at the top, you could set this one to 20%. So what this will do is it will only apply 20% of the brush. And this makes it easier because we can simply apply only a little bit of a purple rather than making it really harsh. So this is going to make it blend more with the person. And we can go further down. It's starting to look a lot better now. Set the brush size to about, let's say 70, and then just apply a little bit onto here, making sure that the scalp is still visible, but the green is just gone. A cool little trick for this is if you want to, you can also hold Alt and then left click on the mask and this will show you exactly what you've been applying onto that mask. So this is really handy and really cool to know. Sometimes you'll encounter problems like this, where if you have a look at the detail right here, you can see that the colors are clashing. And to fix this, all you have to do is select a black color on the brush tool and make sure you select in the mask layer itself. And then you just want to take it away from here. And as you can see, it's starting to remove it. Now we also need to do the same for the curves layer because this will leave a bright color behind. So if we now remove this, you can see it is looking a lot better. Right, and there we go. So everything is looking really good. 